Chapter one has to do with operations and productivity. So I will share my screen with you as we get started here. Hope everybody is doing well. All right. So in this particular case, as I said, we're going to deal with operations and productivity. This will give you an overview of the course and specifically talk about some productivity calculations. We will talk about what operations management is. Some people have a rough idea what uh, we're referring to or what this course is about. Well, operations management is also often referred to as supply chain management. We'll talk about some of the differences between goods and services, which you are quite well aware of already. We're going to talk about difference between production, which is how much, uh, which is what you make versus productivity, which is how many you make. We're going to calculate single and multi-factor productivity. And we'll also talk about some of the variables that are uh, enhancing or affecting your ability to be productive or not productive. So production is simply the creation of goods and services. That's it. So it didn't exist before, it does exist now. Would that be creating a haircut as a service or would that be creating an iPhone? So it uh, has to do with all of the aspects, all of the input factors. So in this case, they're looking at making some uh, Coke. So they're uh, dealing with the uh, beet or sugarcane farmer, as you can see, who's growing the, uh, the beets or sugarcane. Once the farmer once the, has grown those particular inputs, then they send them to the syrup maker, which creates the syrup for the uh, cola. And then it goes to the bottler. Now the syrup producer and the bottler can be the same. It can be the same. It can be in the same plant. They don't have to be, but they're different stages of the production process. Then once the bottles are created, they need to be shipped to where the customer is. So they are shipped by a various means. In this case, you can see they're sent by a truck and it goes to the retailer and the consumer goes into the retailer and purchases the product off the shelves. So you have from raw materials to a finished good. And even these days, and then you have also say websites that provide services beyond. So if it's not say something like a soft drink, uh, or somebody, even if it was a soft drink, if somebody wants to read the ingredients and uh, find out that, they can go to the website of the company and find out about the particular product. Or if it's something more technical, like a drawing tablet, they want to find out the features and the rating and stuff like that. So the, the, the producer or the manufacturer of the particular product can even go beyond the consumer, even for things like help and uh, chats and things along that line. These are some of the topics that we'll be uh, discussing in this course, not necessarily all of them, depending on which particular course you've signed up for, but just to give you an idea of, we'll, we'll talk about uh, certainly layout strategies, we'll certainly talk about inventory, which is really huge. We'll talk about scheduling in particular, that's common to all of the courses that uh, you've signed up for. One of the things that has happened in operations management is a shift from a very sort of localized type of mentality or focus to more of a global focus. So it's not unusual for a company to source things from China or Brazil or wherever in the world. So it's become a global village as opposed to what resources do we have in the local area. And you can see that you've gone from uh, just accepting the lowest bid to partnering with uh, companies in your supply chain. So it's like building a friendship with them. When you have a friendship with somebody, they're willing to do things that they wouldn't if you're not friends with them. Simple as that. Uh, mass customization. Dell Computers was one of the first companies to really get this and get it right. So when you order a computer from Dell, you just don't get their standard product. You can go in and you can select your video card. You can select the type of hard drive you want, the type of RAM that you want, et cetera. And you can build it 
to what you want and they get it to you quickly and it's not like they're charging you 20 or 40 percent more ethics in supply chain is important and we'll talk about that later in the course i've already mentioned the fact that supply chain or operations management i'll use the terms interchangeably by the way is uh very much global environmentally sensitive is important companies want to be very conscious about their energy footprint their waste what types of product what type of packaging they use uh, it's also can save the company a lot of money by using less energy or recycling uh, brewery companies used to just let the uh, carbon dioxide go up into the air from the brewing process and now what they do is they capture that carbon dioxide and they sell that to other companies so it's better for the environment i already mentioned mass customization uh, allowing people or employees more authority partnering supply chain or partnering with your supply chain so the school that you're at will partner with the publishers and they've done that for a very long time they have very good relationships with the publishers. So if if books, uh, I've had situations where a book was late. Uh, one book one time was like three weeks into the term before it arrived in the bookstore. So at once the books were ready, they rushed them to market and they, got, they sent them to the school very quickly. Just in time has to do with a topic we'll talk about very late in the course, but it also has to do with getting the product at the right time. So you don't have it like two weeks ahead or two weeks too late. You get it just when you need it. And of course, the ratio of outputs divided by inputs is uh, productivity. And of course, you want to be more productive. Now, you simply take for the uh, single factor productivity, you simply take the number of units produced and divide it by the input. So in this case, you produced 1,000 units and you spent 250 labor hours to produce 1,000 units. Obviously, then, every hour you produce four units. That's it. Now, your input could be machine hours. It could be labor dollars. But in this case, it is labor hours. Multi-factor productivity is the same, except the biggest difference is the denominator. So what you do is... You take the labor, the material, the energy, et cetera. But the, the thing is, you can't add labor hours to material. So 20 hours of labor and 80 kilograms of material is not 100 anything. So what you need to do with the denominator is to turn it into dollars. So what you do in this particular case is you take the output, which is often measured is either one of two things. The output is measured in units, the number of units you produced or it's based on the number of dollars you produce, which is called total revenue. Then the denominator is your total cost because you can add labor dollars to material dollars to the cost of energy, to the cost of capital and the cost of miscellaneous. And by the way, the miscellaneous is normally things like overhead. So you take total revenue divided by total cost and that will give you how much, you, how much revenue you can produce per dollar of input. Quality is important because if you produce 50 units, but two of them are defective, you can't really sell them. Or if you do sell them, they are sold for a discount. They've got a scratch, they've got a dent, they've got a hole in it or whatever the case may be. Then in that particular case, that would actually reduce the quantity of outputs. So inter external elements, sorry, uh, may also cause an increase or decrease in productivity. Uh, and productivity can sometimes be imprecise, like, like somebody getting their, their hair cut who's just got a buzz cut versus somebody who's got like a full mane of hair is, oh, that's one haircut, but it took 15 minutes and the other one takes 45. So it's sometimes it's, it's hard to measure, especially in services. Major input uh, factors are labor tends to be about 10% of, of the annual uh, uh, labor uh, or annual productivity increase. 
capital is 38% and management is about half and you people will be, become managers. So think about that. You have the largest effect on whether your productivity goes up or down by finding new ways to do things. And that's this, const, this is a constant challenge and that you're going to have in your careers. Now, some of the variables, of course, and this is something you people are working on as we speak, the, the education level of the workforce, training, showing people how to use the piece of equipment properly. Now, the other factors uh, that enhance it are what they call social overhead, making sure your employees stay up to date with technology. And I'm sure you can appreciate that because, you know, when there's a new operating system that comes out or a new new version on your app for your phone and stuff like that, you have to learn a new way of doing things. So service productivity, fairly straightforward. The fact that it's very labor intensive is very much based on the uniqueness of the individual. So different individuals are simply faster. Somebody will be faster at uh, cleaning a, a room if you're a, a cleaning person. Another person might be faster at typing a letter or keyboarding and things along this line. So, and services can be difficult to mechanize. They're, they're slower to get adapted to mechanization. There probably will come a day where, you know, there's a device that you can simply put over your head and have your hair cut. As simple as that. And you do it in, in your own home or with 3D printers, be able to print out a, a part or component rather than having to go to the store. But they can also be difficult to measure for quality. So that's one of the challenges with services. Now, safety is very important and producing safe quality products and also maintaining a safe and clean environment for your employees. In one of the tours I take my students on, the company says, says this, when an employee, or in this case, students come for a tour, we have a very simple goal. That goal is that when the employee leaves work at the end of the day or the student leaves the tour, they are the same, if not better than when they arrived. So it means employees are not hurt. They do not have scratches. They do not have cuts or whatever, or worse. They're safe and they are go, can go home and they've employers provided a safe workplace. In the case of students going on the tour, it's very simple. Is a student more knowledgeable after the tour by seeing what this company does than they were when they arrived? That's the point of tours. So then students can see the things we talk about in class in uh, like operations. And that's the end of chapter one. Thank you.